Hypertensive emergency. Hypertensive emergency is an acute, marked elevation in blood pressure that is associated with signs of target organ damage, which include pulmonary edema, myocardial ischemia, neurologic deficits, acute renal failure, aortic dissection, and preeclampsia or eclampsia. Usually a mean arterial pressure of at least 135 mm mercury is needed to cause a hypertensive emergency. However, this may vary considerably depending on the patient's baseline blood pressure. The relative change in blood pressure from baseline is more important than its absolute value. Hypertensive emergency can occur at lower mean arterial pressures in previously normotensive patients who have acute hypertension, such as pregnant women with preeclampsia. Alternatively, patients with chronic hypertension may have extremely elevated blood pressure without hypertensive emergency. If the patient has acute worsening of organ function, such as aortic dissection, eclampsia, intracranial hemorrhage, then the blood pressure needs to be decreased aggressively. In all other cases, the blood pressure should be lowered gradually to prevent dysfunction of the brain from low perfusion. Intravenous antihypertensives can be divided into three groups. 1. Truly titratable agents, 2. Quasi-titratable agents, 3. Bolus agents. Truly titratable agents have a duration of action less than 30 minutes. The drug is given given as a continuous infusion and is easy to titrate. Examples of truly titratable agents include clavitapine, nitroglycerin, and esmolol. Quasi-titratable agents have a duration of action less than 1 to 2 hours. The drug is given as a continuous infusion, but it's a bit sluggish to titrate. Examples of quasi-titratable agents include nicardipin and diltiazem. Bolus agents have a duration of action greater than 1 to 2 hours. The most sensible way to give the drug is via intermittent bolus doses. If an infusion is used, it will tend to accumulate and be difficult to titrate. Examples of bolus agents include labetalol and metaprolol. Several antihypertensive agents can be used to treat hypertensive emergency. The unifying characteristics are that they are rapidly acting, easily titratable, and are given intravenously. Intravenous vasoactive drips such as lobetalol, esmolol, nicardipin, and nitroglycerin are typically effective options. Oral medications play no role in the immediate management of a hypertensive emergency. Pitfalls in the management of hypertension include 1. Overdiagnosis of hypertensive emergencies in patients with alarmingly high blood pressure but without any damage to target organs. Such cases do not qualify as hypertensive emergencies. 2. Overly aggressive treatment of hypertensive emergencies, which can lead to excessively rapid and significant reductions in blood pressure. 3. Overreliance on oral antihypertensive agents, with unpredictable onset and effectiveness, may pose a risk of dose stacking. 4. Avoid intravenous hydralazine since its effects can be inconsistent and may occasionally cause a drastic drop in blood pressure. 5. Avoid intravenous metaprolol since it may cause severe bradycardia. Some interventions may rapidly reduce the blood pressure in patients with the following conditions. If patient is in pain, treat with appropriate analgesia. If patient is agitated, treat with sedatives or antipsychotics. If patient is volume overloaded, treat with diuresis or dialysis. If patient is having alcohol or sympathetic withdrawal, treat with benzodiazepines. If patient is having urinary retention, place a Foley catheter. Malignant hypertension. The term malignant hypertension is somewhat outdated. It has been used to describe patients with elevated blood pressure and multiple complications with poor prognosis. Classically, this was defined based on the presence of extreme hypertension and hypertensive retinopathy, which was often lethal before the advent of antihypertensives. Today, the term hypertensive crisis is used to describe patients who present with severe blood pressure elevations. The diagnosis can be further classified as a hypertensive emergency when severe elevation in blood pressure is associated with end organ damage or hypertensive urgency when severe hypertension occurs without it.
Hypertensive urgency. Hypertensive urgency is a term that has been used to refer to patients with severely elevated blood pressure, greater than 180 over 120 mm mercury, who do not have target organ damage. However, this is a misnomer because there is no urgent need to reduce the blood pressure and no need for hospital admission. Aggressive reduction in blood pressure is more likely to cause harm than benefit in this clinical context. It would probably be ideal to eliminate the term hypertensive urgency and replace it with the term asymptomatic uncontrolled hypertension in order to discourage overreacting to this condition. If a patient with hypertensive urgency is encountered in the outpatient context, it might be reasonable to start them on a low dose of a chronic oral antihypertensive agent with a relatively benign side effect profile, for example, amlodipine. It might also be wise to arrange close follow-up with their primary care provider for management of their blood pressure. Obtaining adequate follow-up and ambulatory blood pressure measurement is probably more important than the immediate patient management. Special considerations in the management of hypertensive emergency include 1. Aortic dissection Traditional teaching is to target the systolic blood pressure at 100 to 120 mm mercury. Intravenous beta blockers, most commonly esmolol, are first-line treatments due to their ability to lower blood pressure while avoiding reflex tachycardia and increased shear stress to the aortic wall. Using nitroprusside to treat aortic dissection has become an infrequent practice due to its association with rapid and profound hypotension, tachyphylaxis, as well as the potential for cyanide toxicity. Nicardipin with the addition of a beta blocker would also be a reasonable choice. 2. Acute hemorrhagic stroke. In acute brain hemorrhage, reduction of systolic blood pressure below 140 mm mercury may improve functional outcomes. This requires an aggressive approach with rapidly titrated intravenous antihypertensives, and extreme vigilance is necessary to prevent hypotension, which causes decreased cerebral perfusion pressure and adds to the ischemic insult. Easily titratable medications with rapid onset and short duration of action, such as nicardipin, are recommended. 3. Acute ischemic stroke. Stroke patients eligible for thrombolysis should have blood pressure controlled to systolic blood pressure below 185 mm mercury and diastolic blood pressure below 110 mm mercury. For those not receiving thrombolytics, only levels of systolic blood pressure above 220 mm mercury or diastolic blood pressure above 120 mm mercury should be treated. As hypertension in acute stroke is usually transient and may be protective. A reasonable goal is about a 15% decrease in mean arterial pressure. 4. Preeclampsia or eclampsia. Preeclampsia or eclampsia is a particularly troubling and difficult to manage hypertensive emergency, since there are two patients to consider. The first line therapy is magnesium sulfate, administered as a 4 to 6 gram loading dose, followed by 1 to 2 gram per hour infusion. Care must be taken to monitor for urine output, deep tendon reflexes, and respiratory status. If further antihypertensives are needed, beta blockers can be used, but only to treat systolic blood pressure higher than 160 mm mercury. Hydralazine was once listed as the preferred agent in pregnant patients. However, its delayed onset of action, prolonged duration, and unpredictable hypotensive effects make it a less than ideal choice. Regardless of the agent, the patient is likely to need close monitoring in a critical care setting.